something something new I've never built one of these before uh, but it should be a lot of fun we're in, under a little bit of a time constraint hopefully we can get this built in the next um, month month or two and uh, I'm excited about this I've been waiting for a few months we just got this delivered today anybody want to guess what it is it's from Boone's Mill Virginia home of Titan trains and so this is going to be a caboose. Uh, it's a little bit larger than what we normally work in, uh, but for those of you that know me, not only do I work in G scale, uh, uh, G gauge 124-ish uh, with the uh, buildings and the trains and so forth, but I also have a passion for live steam and seven and a half inch gauge, uh, the ones that you can ride on. So, um, I can go ahead and, and say, well, geez, you know, why is this on a garden railroads? Well, it's still some of the same type of concepts and, and processes, whether you're building a, one that's a little bit bigger or one a little bit smaller. Hopefully you get some good ideas uh, that you can go ahead and then uh, tackle uh, yourselves. If you've never built um, a train car or a caboose or anything like that for your railroad, um, hopefully this might inspire you to try it, whether it's a uh, seven and a half inch gauge or G gauge or N or HO or or whatever. Oh, um, and for those of you that are in the um, in the live scale seven and a half inch gauge, why are we talking about garden stuff? Because um, it's still all about that love and passion for railroading. So uh, let's open this up and see what this looks like. Um, and this is going to be really cool. So the one that I'm modeling after is, um, and we'll get some video as it, as it finishes up, is this is going to um, go behind a, um, a steeple cab that um, some of you may know of Ken Schroeder. Um, and he's down in the Minden Gardnerville area. He builds beautiful um, locomotives and shays, and he has built this building a steeple cab for me. It'll be electric, but I'm going to do a little bit kind of uh, not uh, down the traditional rivet counter type. Um, finish. This is going to be the spirit of Nevada, and it's going to be a beautiful, and I think I might call it Little Miss Nevada or something like that, and it'll be a steeple cab, a combination car, a coach car, and then this caboose. And it's going to be, um, our plan is to paint it in the Nevada colors, the silver and blue, because we are the silver state. And um, it's not going to be your standard uh, kind of rivet counter, um, typical prototypical. It's going to be a beautiful metallic blue. Um, we're going to detail, super detail the inside of it. And um, so it's going to be a really fancy caboose, um, but it'll be fun. And so I'm not planning on, like I said, not making a prototypical scale model of it, um, but hopefully it'll turn out really nice. The one that um, I did do, I think, if you've seen on some of my other channels, um, we uh, the Tunnel Cut and Trestle Railroad. This will be part of that railroad, and um, it will... Um, that one there, there was a caboose that uh, my dad and uh, Walt Disney had made uh, back in the late 50s. And that one was left outside behind a barn uh, for, gosh, probably 20, 30 years. And it was buried in leaves and dirt and everything. And when I found it, um, it was literally inside of it, there was a rat's nest with uh, rats living in it. And we uh, 
cleaned that all up and I restored it and uh, detailed the inside. So it's going to be similar to that. It uh, should be pretty cool, pretty fun. And um, we will, um, I'll show you some videos of that uh, later on. I actually end up having to make, I'll have to make two of these. Uh, one for uh, my train, the Little Miss Nevada, and then one for the, uh, the Melissa train that's uh, down in Los Angeles for the uh, Tunnel Cut and Trestle, the actual railroad down there. But uh, this is looking pretty cool. Where'd my knife go? This looks like a pretty good uh, kit. Um, Get all the stuff in here. So the two that I'm going to make, this one's all uh, from a kit. And the other one, I think uh, I might go ahead and just have it already uh, assembled, but then uh, I'll go ahead and do the, all the detailing of it. Um, I'll just take a look and see how complicated how much time, because I need to have them both done. Uh, but it's the beginning of May right now, and I need to have these both done and ready to go to uh, Los Angeles by the um, middle of July. It's our deadline for that. All right, well, we got this uh, open out of the box. Um, well, it uh, looks pretty nice. They uh, have uh, included, it looks like just about everything you need. They got uh, uh, wood glue and uh, the wood putty, the nails. Uh, looks like a pretty uh, complete kit, which is nice. Um, so, what I'm going to do next is um, we're going to load this up into the truck and we're going to head south of town here about um, well, about an hour drive, 45 minute drive down to Minden Garnerville and uh, we'll pop in and see our friend uh, Steve Alley. A lot of you guys might know him. Um, he's uh, one of the um, one of the most uh, talented uh, locomotive builders uh, that you can uh, that you have the pleasure of running across. Extremely talented individual, good friend. And um, we're going to talk about, um, about this kit. And um, as we have a partial kit that uh, I found in a, in a garage sale. And so you see if he can make some of the, the parts to finish off uh, that other kit. And uh, then we might swing by Ken Schroeder's house. And uh, he's the one that's building the uh, steeple cab that will eventually pull this uh, caboose. So. Um, we'll get this loaded in the truck and we'll head down to Menin and Garnerville. Well, hello, I'm Holly McLean with Train Lee TV and today we're here with John O'Brien, yes. a fellow modeler and... Well, it's a great honor to be here, <laughs> I think. Uh, well, this, this should be fun. You've, yep. you've built a lot of models and... Yep, and, and this is more like building cabinetry in that, uh, you know, you actually can pick things up and, you know, you can take them to the table saw, <laughs> you know, whereas most models you can't do that. So a lot of times uh, people are going, well, you know, we mostly do G scale, so why in the world are we doing inch and a half scale, seven and a half inch gauge? Well, I heard a story, Holly. <laughs> I heard that that you left your G-gauge trains outside. They got wet and they grew. They grew, yeah. And so then you ended up at, you know, seven and a half inch trains and um, they, they seem to breed prolifically <laughs> in that you've got them everywhere. Yeah. Well, this, this should be fun though. There's a, a lot of skills that you can do either when you're doing G-gauge or seven and a half inch, inch and a half gauge, or inch and a half scale. A uh, guy that I work with on the, in the financial services business, he's al he always said, big is just bigger. And uh, just the only difference between big and bigger is the number of zeros involved. So I guess this is pretty similar. We're gonna have a lot of the same parts and a lot of the same techniques. 
yeah. building this larger, larger scale. Yeah, you know, a two hundred dollar caboose ends up being what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this will this will be a, a, um, a, a good little project once it's all done. Now, one of the things that we want I wanted to say is um, for the that we affectionately call the rivet counters out there. This is not going to be a scale reproduction of a specific car down to each nut and bolt, but kind of a, a fancy, fun type caboose that's going to, we're going to really do a lot of detail inside and it's not going to, it wouldn't be your typical work caboose. It'd be kind of more of a luxury VIP caboose. Yeah, like the railroad barons had, yep. right? Yeah. Plush the seats, flush yeah. toilets. Yeah. Yeah. Sat, you know, satellite TV. Oh, well, that. I don't know about the railroad <laughs> barons there, but okay. Um, and so what we have, we actually have two, two kits. I've got one kit that I got in the garage sale and it's a center coupler and it has most of the pieces. And then I went ahead and bought another kit from, um, uh, Titan trains, which was originally, uh, let's see, it was, um, Mo mountain car and then mountain car got, is now part of Titan trains and they sent us this kit. And it comes with a, um, a set of about 20 or so fairly detailed drawings of um, all the different parts. Um, almost all the wood parts are all cut out, ready to go. And they send you um, a bag of nails, a couple of bags of nails, uh, some wood glue, some wood paste uh, for filling in holes and, and a bag of sand. So, um, and then the other one. Have you figured out where the sand goes? Well, since it's not a steam locomotive and there's no sanders, I think they are suggesting that it goes on the roof. But we have some, I have some really cool roof, roofing material that we're gonna use that will um, end up being pretty nice. So. Did you read these instructions? Because that's exactly what it says. says hey, there we go. Yeah. Um, speaking of instructions, there are no instructions with this kit. It's strictly the pieces of wood and 20 or so pages of drawings. So we're gonna walk you through on how we put this together. Uh, neither one of us have put one of these things together. So uh, it'll be interesting, make sure it comes it's, together. It's very much like your buildings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we know what the end product's supposed to look like yeah. and we'll do our darndest to put it all together and make it look like Good. that. So. What we've done so far is we, um, in the previous episode, I unpacked the, the boxes and now what we did was we have the, the center beams and uh, one of them's aluminum, that's out of the new kit. And then we had to make um, uh, the center beams and, and mounts. Um, and so our friend uh, Steve Alley, who does uh, from Allen Model Works, went ahead and cut the steel and drilled some holes for us. And uh, John noticed as we were reading the, uh, the drawings that these had a much smaller hole in here. And in the, in the drawings, it called for a quarter inch holes. So we uh, drilled these out to a quarter inch. Uh, we used a vibrating sander with 150 grit sandpaper, sanded these all kind of smooth, um, cleaned them all up. Uh, we used a, um, a file to smooth out the inside edges and uh, clean them up with denatured alcohol and a little simple chlorine. And these are all ready to paint. And, um, and in the steel tubing, there was a little, little bit of a ridge on these and um, the couplers will go in there. So we used a, a, a little miniature um, belt sander and we uh, smoothed out the inside so we have a nice smooth tube that the uh, couplers can uh, mount into. After that, we, uh, the original, the older kit did not have any holes drilled into it. So we used um, the new piece of wood and uh, John came up with a nice little jig uh, for making sure that these holes were going straight up and down 90 degrees so that we don't have any goofy angles with when we mount the bolsters and the trucks and so forth in there. Yeah. Uh, and then we um, drilled the uh, additional holes here to mount these, um, these are kind of like riding uh, plates for the trucks that will. Yeah, it keeps the, the bolsters uh, from the car rocking back and forth too much. Too much. So, um, so the next step that we're gonna do before we paint this is we just wanna make sure that everything lines up nicely and we'll kind of bolt these together. Um, 
And were we putting in the big hole up no, or down? The big hole goes down. Big hole goes down. And so these will just kind of fit in right like so. And you got the one more there. And is it these here? Uh -huh. Remember which ones are the. Uh, okay. So. Or four of these. These are the. This, these are for these, so we're not going to put these on first. Okay. Let's first take the the boards apart. Okay. And we'll build one at a time. Go ahead and 